Hello everyone, welcome to this channel. I am Lily. Today we are going to do part two of the Migrants Patch Challenge. We are going to go from migrating in year 12 and all the way till year 13 or perhaps even year 14. The problem I fear will not be the lack of housing. It is almost 100% sure to be the lack of food. Uh, we need to be really careful with rationing as well as specifically the children and the elder will suffer a lot from not getting enough food. So today we're going to see how many more we can get and also try to keep absolutely everyone happy. That's going to be a, a completely impossible to do. There will always, always, always in a large tribe be some people that you just cannot please, whether it be because of lack of food, lack of housing, too much work hours, whatever, whatever. The list is a mile long and will keep piling, but we are certainly going to do our best. Let's go for it. Here we are. Year 12, 133 people and the food is going out and we will have to migrate. Uh, I was hoping we could uh, find a much better place when we migrate now because this place is definitely cursed. There has been so bad with food around here that I really really hope we can find something better when we migrate now. I'm going to task my entire tribe to take down all the pelt huts so we can take with us the pelts and also the fine sticks. If we can do it, we will try to get up as many of the pelt huts as possible and perhaps if we are lucky, chuck up a big straw hut and also a big reed hut. The first priority, whatever we land, will have to be food for everyone first. However, we need to get really lucky to get a very good food seed. Most of the times when I migrate, I do not get very good seats at all. And when you have a very large tribe, you won't be able to stay for a full year in any of the areas. Okay, so that was all the pelt huts done. Now let's um, do something that I do quite often. If I like an area, I migrate out of it, walk for a while, and then I turn back to exactly the same spot. Let's try it. It's not like we are, are going to stay for a year anyway, I think. I mean, I doubt we will have good seeds. I probably only have good seeds about one out of eight times if I'm lucky. But here's to uh, that my luck is kicking in now. We shall see. Here we are. Let's have a look around. We see the Wonky River that I like so much. Um, yeah, there's plenty of stones and those will not bring honey, no. I wish there was a few fewer of those uh, eyesores, you know, the brown things on the ground, because you can't do anything about them. Let's have a quick look. I can't see any hazelnuts. Doesn't mean there's none here, but it's just I can't see them. So let's see what they have. Okay, okay. Okay, well, there shouldn't be any clams. I have prepared my, my tribe for, for uh, coastal habitation. Let's not do that. Berries, mushrooms, mm -mm, yeah, okay. Well, let's just uh, get on with it and do bit by bit. Look here, roses. Very good. And they are in season. That is excellent. Let's see, let's just, uh, let's just plonk down somewhere. Yep, this, this should be all right. Let's get down some fireplaces. If you can't build the huts to a piece of whatever unrest you will get when you migrate, you can appease them a little bit by chucking down more than one fireplace because they will sleep around the fireplace and at least it's not 100% unrest increasing. It is only 50%. So they, they will go a bit longer before they are threatening to leave you. So up the groups a bit. Yeah, let's see do a little bit to help using the clear task tool to get them to get the stones for the fireplace and also the sticks shouldn't take too long depending on how busy they are but they need to get food because we don't have a lot left at all they need to be quick with the food actually let's get some um, storage areas it will be for the stones and also the sticks so I've ordered them to uh, start working and um, 
I have uh, five fireplaces and storage area for the two things that you need to build the fireplaces. It's going to be a bit of a, a, a long walk for them because we, we didn't land here. We land on the other side over there, so they have to carry all the stuff first over and then they will uh, throw themselves over the fireplaces. I just hope it won't take too long, but uh, I do need them to be vigilant in getting food as well. Um, let's see if I can get away with chocking down some huts to try to keep them appeased. They won't be done in a few days, so but at least we have placed them down. Okay, so morning number one. You can see everyone has a grumpy face on their portrait. They are unhappy to sleep in the open. We already know that. But uh, at least they are working on the fireplaces, so that will keep some of them a little bit appeased. And then as they get the time for it, they will start on the pelt huts. They are normally really quick to build. Well, the, the food is trickling in. Like I can see there's uh, plenty of the rosehips and also some of the hazelnuts. And I see the hunters are already hunting and the fishermen are already fishing. So they will eat the raw food as well. So we don't need anything for processing yet. I am, however, worried that with this size of tribe, there will be some kind of um, lag in my game because I don't have the world's best graphics card and I don't have the world's best computer so sometimes if I go with too many people like 200 plus I can get a bit of lag and, and slow game and I have already lowered all my graphics settings okay so they have built one pelt hut and some of the fireplaces um, things will take a little bit of time because I'm keeping my tribe really really busy there are no people who just mock about and don't have anything to do in, in a tribe this size at this point in the migration we just cannot afford people sitting around doing nothing you know thinking about it the Mesolithic didn't have any tribes really that were over 100 people and here we are trying to push these limits and we are kind of doing it but we are paying a little bit for it because it is not easy in the slightest so it kind of is super realistic because the devs have managed to make the game so that when you are over a hundred it will be really really hard to keep people alive and we even have it easier don't we because we can save the game before we think it might go bad and if it does go bad we can go back and reload our game you know People back in the Mesolithic, they couldn't just save their butts and then reload it when things went titty up. So we're quite uh, quite lucky in comparison, I guess. I mean, whatever difficulties and challenges that we will face when trying to reach 250 people, which should never happen or never did happen in the Mesolithic, we kind of have it coming. And since we are testing the Mesolithic at the moment going over to Neolithic, there is no need for any more adjustment or any more optimization than for what was realistic back in the Mesolithic times, which was 100 population. But uh, the optimization and adjustment will come as we go into the Neolithic, of course. Otherwise, how are we going to support big villages and farm communities? Okay, let's, uh, let's get some uh, storage areas down need to keep it a little bit uh, organized there won't be any kind of you know aesthetics with lovely fences and, and projects and wonders we can barely stay alive as it is so I think that's exactly what we're going to focus on and not anything that will beautify or anything of that sort at least for now I don't think we can ever do it with over a hundred people it's just not gonna happen because you have to stay for at least a decade at least a decade depending on what size of project you want to do and not very likely is it nope well not for now when Neolithic comes ta-da here we go okay that was the storage areas right we need to do some food processing but let's first see if uh, they are done with all the tasks that I've already given them okay that's done the huts are done at least the three of them that I will build for now and also the fireplaces let's place down a few dryers they are always useful uh, it's not like I think that uh, anything will go out on date I almost said <laughs> nothing will be decayed of the food because it's going to be from hand to mouth at this point when you are above 130 okay 
let's get some of these ranks up to max then they will be quickly maintained quickly repaired and I think I'm gonna add another one because their fish tends to come in at least in the start it tends to come in uh, really fast to big amounts because your fisherman kind of like only goes outside the door right outside the door you know it's not like you have to walk half the day to reach a fishing spot and also let's get these corresponding baskets for the raw produce raw produce will of course decay a lot faster than the dried so preparing for zero waste is always a good tactic okay they are really quick today they're almost done with the dryers and also the baskets look at them go they are so efficient I love this it also looks much more efficient when you're playing on, on max speed doesn't it they are running around like small busy bees <laughs> okay remembering to assign them produce Ta -da! so Okay, it's almost night now. Let's uh, just skip the night. Oh, hello. This is the first set of migrants in quite some time. Two females. Of course. Why would we not accept them? <laughs> of course we want the females. We want everyone at this point. We're trying to reach 250, don't we? Well, I wouldn't say I would accept a group of like eight really old men. That's going to be such a drain on the tribe. But, you know... The younger people who can work is not a drain. They are actually working for their survival. It feels a bit wrong to, to have to have that attitude that elders do not contribute. You know, they reach a certain age and then they are only mouths to feed. Um, when in fact they have spent their entire life building the future for our generation, you know. So it feels wrong to say so, but in this game, at the moment they have uh, no real purpose when they cannot work anymore it's just a drain on the food it is what it is for now it is in development and i'm sure that will change but uh, for now i i, I would reject uh, a group of only elder okay place down a few tanners because we need a constant influx of of leather to build pelt huts i think okay let's uh, remember to Assign produce to the baskets. It should be raw meat and the other one should be raw fish. There you go. I think I'm going to try to get up a few more peltots at least to keep more people appeased. If the unrest is accumulating too high, they, they will start threatening to leave. And those with higher will, they will, they will just up and leave you. Even if you're building huts and they can see you're building huts, they will not wait for your ass. They will go. Yeah, good luck finding another tribe. Seriously, I'm the only one here. <laughs> Where are they gonna go? <laughs> I wish we could somehow see where they're going in the future. There has been so many brilliant ideas on the forums and otherwise Discord about uh, how these leavers are either creating their own little tribe, they are creating a, a hostile bunch of bandits in the outskirts of your village ready to raid you. I mean, I can't wait to see where this is going. It's going to be awesome no matter. Because at the moment, where are they going? Nowhere. There's nowhere to go. I'm alone. <laughs> you're alone where you're playing at the moment. <laughs> but I am looking forward to see what the devs are going to come up with and perhaps if they're going to use some of the ideas that the community has provided. So, I uh, also was brave enough to chuck down a straw hut, hoping it will be done before we have to migrate again. I'm not optimistic, I have to admit. Uh, this is probably going to be one of those where you stay like one and a half season, then you hurriedly have to pack down everything and find a new place. The seed is not impressive, um, I'm afraid to say, but it, it is what it is. Okay, so the buildings are coming along nicely. I think um, I might have to up my crafters a little bit to get more tools. Always have something in reserve. A bit, always make a few more than what you are using at the moment, just in case you have to hurriedly up your groups. If you don't use bifaces for your gathering groups, they will be much less efficient. Much, much less efficient. I always have a little bit more than needed just so that if shit hits the fan then we can quickly off our groups and still be efficient 
and also the multi-usage tool specifically needs to be a little bit more so that the fishermen don't suddenly so one day run off with the hunter's tool because there is not enough of the fishing tools and then the hunters can't go hunt that is not a good idea so better safe than sorry and with the morning comes a birth welcome to the world oh my god i have seven pregnant people gosh that's a lot Oh, maybe not, because we are 136 people, so yeah, seven pregnancies is roughly what it should be, plus minus. Okay, so I should uh, probably get down a haystack to preserve the straw, even though I'm, for now I'm only building one. So, and uh, oh yeah, I want benches. I know it's a luxury and it doesn't really provide anything for the tribe, but that is for my eyes. This is for my eyes to, to watch, and also I like seeing the elders sit and relax on it. It's, uh, it's as it should be, isn't it? I bet the further into the population I get, when I get like to like 200 population, I'm not going to bother with anything, nothing at all, benches or no. If you have the fireplace, be happy. <laughs> yep, that is my bench done. I think, I did I make two? Yeah, I did. I made two. So now I just have to wait to see how long they're going to take to build the straw hut. It's a big straw hut, so it's a, a bit more to do than only a small one, which I never build anyway. Because the, the normal straw hut takes 35 sticks, 5 rope and 100 straw. It's just so uneconomical compared to the pelt hut. They give the same sleep positivity or the same appeasement. So there's absolutely no point wasting your resources on a straw hut when you can get the same from only using the leather and a few fine sticks. And there, is, there are no scarce materials needed to make the pelt hut while you need the plant fiber to make ropes for any of your other bigger huts. Of course that is me thinking long term and survival and everything like that. Just pure efficiency wherever I can. If you, of course, are, are wanting to beautify your camp and have a diversity, of course you go for it. I mean, you will play the way you want to play. I mean, you can play this game in so many ways. There's no set way of how to play it or how it should look. Certainly not how it should look. You can do however you like it. But if you want to min-max a little bit and to stay long-term or even have a huge tribe, you need to make some concessions when it comes to, for instance, the decoration and the beauty of it. Because not everything is efficient, even though it is pretty. So there's that. Okay. Okay, so now they are done building everything I've tossed them with. Uh, I should place down a few pits. Yeah, I know. It's very optimistic. It's not likely going to be filled, any of them. I mean, it's going to be hand-to-mouth feeding most of the time anyway, isn't it? But no waste policy demands that we chuck down some pits as well, no matter how little. Um, I should also get down some baskets for the finished products, especially dried fish, dried meat. And I should also do, um, I should also do honey, to be honest. Just, uh, I don't need to be really careful with the fiber because it's not like I plan on staying here for years. Um, so I'm, I'm going to chuck down a little bit more than I perhaps need, just to be sure. No waste is no waste. Uh, also don't want to do too many though, because when you are placing down projects, you are taking away people from their normal chores to do these projects. So we need to kind of balance it a bit better out. If it, if it comes down to storage versus people having food it, to eat at all, it will always be the storage that is losing. Okay, so now they are placed and they will be fairly quickly built. Okay, so that's done. Um, so we do have quite a few people that we need to take care of, like 137 population and also eight pregnancies. I mean, I can't remember last time I saw this many, but then again, it's been so long time since I have played such a lost tribe as well. Um, let's have a look and see if there are other things that annoys people or that increases their unhappiness. Um, no, it, it is basically that uh, they have to sleep in the open or that they are not very fond of sleeping by the fireplace, but uh, it is what it is. We have no choice. We just have to keep going like it is. So let's see if we can get down a few more pelt hearts. That means more people will be appeased. But it's not like it's going to solve all the unhappy faces. Because they, they, at least those who have poor grades of some of the, uh, 
the, the trades uh, will still want uh, something else. They want lower work hours, they want better housing, etc., etc. We just need to keep the majority happy enough to not leave. This is going to be more and more precarious to fix as the tribe grows larger. In the end, we, we just have to make sure they are fed and have a fireplace. Ta-da, that will have to be it, I think. Unless we land on a superb spot and we can stay a year, with, which, to be honest, is not very likely. The larger your tribe grows, the less likely it is that you will manage to stay for at least a year. It's just too big. The game in the current development is not meant to be over 100 population because the Mesolithic has no evidence of any tribes managing more than roughly 100 people. And since Ancient Cities is based on as realistic as the devs could possibly get it, it goes for us players as well. If we go over 100 population, we are asking for trouble. It is what it is. You know, as soon as we can start doing some farming, we can afford to settle, you know, because that's what they did. When they went into the Neolithic era, they became more and more sedentary. They didn't have to follow the prey, you know. They could stay same place and just uh, tend all their farms. And, uh, of course, that's what we are going to do as well when we reach that point, isn't it? Okay, so I've made a struggler group to uh, harvest some of the things that are supposed to come in season right about now. It is hazelnuts and also the blackberries. Uh, I don't even know that we have blackberries in this area. I think I've never had the blackberries in this area, at least not in this timeline. But we shall quickly find out. Oi, I have one threatening to leave already. What is her problem? Okay, she's frail, that's a fitness reducing, and then a negative grade in the will. If she now has high will, which she does, I might actually lose her unless I get more uh, hops up and going. Look at that, dude, hungry, exploited, and yeah, the housing is precarious. It really, really needs to be sorted. But no, I cannot, I cannot lower the work hours. It's not gonna work. I will have to just accept that she will leave me. It is what it is. We can't lower the work hours, and I personally do not want to lower the work hours, especially not for any kind of reasons that has to do with trait-induced unrest. You know, when we have a good income of food and materials, we could perhaps lower the work age or lower the work hours. As long as the trickle-in is enough to sustain the tribe, we can always lower the work hours. But there is no way I can do it now. That's not going to happen. We are not going to even manage one season anywhere if I lower the work hours. So I also added another fishing group and uh, increased some of the... Uh, vacancies in some of the groups because I need a better trickle than this because when you have 130 plus you can see that it's barely enough for one meal for everyone although not everyone eats one of each like one kilo of each um, it's still not enough uh, I have to up it up and when things like this starts to need adjustment I certainly cannot lower the work hours so I will lose those who have these uh, trait induced unhappiness uh, issues um, so, yeah, at least if they have very high will, because then they will have the will to leave the tribe. So, let's uh, remember to assign honey for this one. Then we need a few fish and also some dried meat assigned. I don't think I'm going to need more than two. Actually, I don't think I'm going to need any of these, because looking at the amounts coming in, it's... Uh, so low. I'm not, I'm not sure we can even manage a winter here. I don't think we are. Oh, crikey, we have to move during winter. It's the worst, absolute worst time to uh, to migrate. There is zero plant food. Also looking at the uh, diversity of the food we have, we don't have any uh, blackberries. And we barely have any hazelnuts. So this was an extremely poor seed of food. Again, I'm going to start preparing for migration again. I'm going to up my crafters to, to build a lot of ropes and a lot of fine sticks and stuff like that. Just yeah. empty this area and then move on. If we can't keep our people alive, then there's no point in staying, is there? There will be no tribe then. <laughs> so that means I also need to up the tasks 
for people who are gathering stuff to make tools and stuff. So lots of fiber and everything is needed. Place down another straw hut. I'm just hoping that it will be done so that people can get some more uh, unrest taken away before we have to migrate. I mean, every little helps. Okay, and I can also take away the blackberries in this straggler group because we don't have any in this locality, at least not yet. Sometimes due to seed dissemination, they don't come up immediately. It takes some time for them to grow from the ground and then up and then to become um, mature enough to carry fruits. It is just like it is today, you know, not everything comes up at the same time. And of course, the devs have managed to transform this into the game as well. So this is why we have seasonal fruits, isn't it? The same goes with seeds. They lay dormant until the conditions are right for them to uh, start growing. Oh, we also got another group of migrants. Oh, this one's lo quite large, isn't it? Hmm, can we handle this? There's quite a few men. Quite a few kids, not many though. Mm, yeah, let's just let's just take them. Challenge. Here we come. Like we're not already in the challenge. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna be so hard to keep all these people alive. But it's gonna be fun to try to see how long I can keep them alive. So add more groups because we have plenty of people for it now more food meaning we can stay longer in the same place but um i don't think we are going to manage to stay over winter we probably have to migrate which is why i'm preparing my my tribe to migrate already with adding all the extra tasks for for uh, resources and tool making and stuff and i'm probably going to have to give up on that straw hut <laughs> it was very optimistic though wasn't it well since we are hitting on the big drum preparing everyone for migration i need people to not be so unhappy so i'm going to see if i can manage somehow to get up a large reed hut so that people can rotate sleeping in it so that they don't leave me within three days after we have migrated because of lack of housing we need to get their unrest down somehow my oh goodness did i forget to uh, assign produce to all the pits ah oh well it happens i think we're going to get the system that will warn us when our a completed storage area or storage facility does not have a produce assigned. I hope it comes soon because I keep forgetting these things because the larger your tribe is the more you need to pay attention to absolutely everything and it becomes so much to keep an eye on which I don't mind obviously but uh, you know I do forget things. So against all odds we are now approaching winter. I can't believe we managed to stay this long but uh, let's see how it goes. Um, I've added a few more huts and I've managed to build the straw hut and also the uh, the reed hut. So now I'm building more pelt huts just to do my very best to get people's unrest down. Your people are already thinking about leaving because the food is getting low and everything is low. So I, I'm going to do something that I normally never do. I'm going to up my hunters and allow them to hunt absolutely everything because it is now becoming precarious. Because when people are starting to think about leaving, it means that th it's more than the housing bothering them. They are now starting to become hungry as well because there's not enough food to go around for everyone. Also, later I will have to start uh, doing some rationing as well which I never like to do, but you know, it is what it is. We're also out of bones because there's not enough animals hunted for the tools I'm making. So we need to have the hunters for that reason as well. You know, th there's a balance of absolutely everything you're doing. And of course, knowing that this balance, it needs to be adjusted by you. It makes it even harder to remember everything because you need to keep a constant eye on absolutely everything. If you do not get the balance right, in accordance with the locality you will hinder your own progress and you are most certainly going to have a lot of people leaving you so th there is a lot more to think about the larger your tribe gets because the environment will respond to your size of tribe it will respond to everything you do in it and it's just like it is today isn't it i think i think this is so spot on i i really enjoy this okay so now winter is here so Let's see how long we can last. Uh, the uh, hunters are coming home with 100 meat-ish per day, which can stave off the worst of the hunger of people. But it, it, people are still not happy. There's not much I can do about it right now. But uh, 
at least there is meat for them and some plant produce not much left because this is it for the uh, for the season isn't it it's not going to come anymore during the entire winter and if we are really unlucky there will barely be any berries in in the spring so it's getting really bad actually um, I have maxed out my hunters and they are hunting everything they can come across but you see the food is disappearing so so quickly hmm I might have to migrate during winter I'm actually pretty sure I will have to we are clinging on the area is still not completely dried out of resources so we are still going a little bit strong over here um, we are actually in the winter now so I might have been a little bit pessimistic about when we needed to migrate but uh, let's see I could still be right I could still be right that we have to migrate during the uh, the winter which is the worst time to migrate absolutely well with adding all these different types of huts we have at least managed to get a large proportion of the tribe to lose their unrest uh, and this is good this means we are basically uh, prepared now to to migrate in the hopes that uh, few people would leave due to lack of housing because um, there's nothing I can do there's nothing anyone can do to get up housing for 160 plus people the same day you land that is never going to happen so uh, we have to make the best of it and then work with what we have to make sure we lose as few as possible so we have managed to get in the big majority all unrest gone from the tribe of 160 plus there are only a few individuals left to have some unrest and as we can see having like two big straw huts and one big reed hut is kind of all you need so that when people are rotating they are getting rid of their unrest and it takes some time for it to build again so at least that is the housing unrest sorted now we just need to be really wary about the food lacking unrest because that's the one where people actually will die people will die between three to four sleeps with too little or no food so we need to to pay really really close attention to this and it's better to be safe than sorry so if you see that your food is diminishing quicker than it's actually coming in it is time to migrate we have people dancing and that makes me so happy because it means that even though the food is scarce it is enough to still not create any higher unrest and i absolutely love that we've managed to do that now we just need to see for how long look at them going there's several dancing yep it's all worth it now i see them dance it's all good <laughs> come what may they are dancing okay so we are approaching spring but we are also approaching famine so i have to prepare all the pelt huts to be dismantled so we can move on i cannot risk waiting for berries or anything of the plant food to come into season we are going to lose people if we do that so i have to get going we gotta go gotta go guys go 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 okay all pelt huts need to be dismantled or at least the uh leather and the fine sticks and then we don't care about the stones because they will not come with anyway or they shouldn't come with anyway i hope so let's get going oh my word look at that speed i mean seriously there's like 10 huts and it's like woof 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 and they're all dismantled dang if we just had this when they were building the huts that would be awesome but no 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 such luck <laughs> Okay then, where do we want to go? Shall we, um, shall we go to the cows so we can get clams? Would that perhaps be a good idea? When clams are, are not seasonal, you can get them all the time, can't you? Although they do regenerate, so if you, if you, um, uh, harvest everything in one go, it will take some time for them to regenerate, but they will come back. So... Okay, let's uh, let's try this. Let's go for the coast. I mean, how bad can it get? No, Karma, that was not a challenge. I promise. <laughs> for once, please give me a good seed. You know, I promised myself that I'm not going to reload anything. I'm going to play it as is. And I have to stay true to this. Otherwise, I'm kind of cheating, aren't I? It's no problem getting a large tribe if you constantly are cheating and reloading where you cock up. So please give me a good seed. Right, here we are. 
okay so coast yes yes um looks quite pretty here i mean all the areas are pretty aren't they unless you go to bear mountains of course so yeah let's uh let's start immediately get down a bunch of fireplaces and have some action okay then let's see if we can get these built quickly oh well it's uh almost night now so we will have to wait no matter okay so they are uh working on the fireplaces i'm going to chuck down some uh, dryers probably going to need a few um at least there's some food coming in they are so unhappy because they have to sleep out people are threatening to leave all the time they just can hang in there they are so impatient this is like night number two come on better get those uh, huts down it's not important where they are, just chuck them down, I guess. Yeah. Come on, guys, go get food. There's not much to live off. God, I'm going to lose people to starvation, aren't I? 70 plus 30, that's 100. That's not enough. Oh, I just hope they can hang in there. So they're already threatening to leave. Uh, a hut is up already. That's good. I should love on the fireplaces, though. Oh, yeah, here we go. The first one. Do not want to wait. Oh, the second one. Okay, that's two. Oh, well. It's not like I didn't know this wasn't going to come. If you are going to migrate, 160 plus people, you will have issues. Because there will be some with grades and impatience enough to leave you on your third day. It is what it is. Moving on. Okay, so let's get up some storage areas to get some system at least into chaos. Okay, that's it storage area is done let's uh, go a bit forward and start getting up those huts and the fireplaces I hope yeah and uh, definitely a straw hut at least one to start with and they can rotate sleeping in it I really don't want to lose a ton of people okay let's get up some of the baskets for the raw meat the fish and also for the honey and for the dried meat and fish I'm going to be optimistic and place down two for dried fish and two for dried meat. One can only hope. Okay, so at least they are working. The food coming in is very little, but uh, they will have to eat the raw food. I mean, seriously, there's no time to dry it, it seems. I do have the processing for the drying and stuff, but uh, I don't know if uh, they will wait. They will probably just help themselves with, with the raw food. I can... Um, I can chuck down some more fireplaces to see if I can calm down some unrest. So my rationing is on the first notch, which uh, I think is smart to do when the food is so low. I just need to be really careful and keep an eye on the kids so that they don't become sick. Because they can become sick when you, you ration them because they don't get enough of the nutrition they need to grow. So people are still unhappy with the housing issues and probably some of the hunger as well to be honest because there is not really enough food to go around they they should be able to hang in for a little longer though never mind third person is leaving probably a mix of, of lack of housing and also that he probably was hungry I need to to do something I can't have it like this um, I'm gonna create an extra fishing group and uh, just max it out and get in some food. They can live well off the raw food as well. It doesn't have to be dried, you know. It's not like today that we can't eat <laughs> whatever we get. Back in those days, they ate whatever they could. Okay, place down uh, a few more huts. Let's uh, hope to get them up quickly because that will help with the uh, unrest. The mix of unrest between lack of housing and that they are basically going around hungry all the time is going to make other people that do not have these negative grades also leaving so it's a it's an evil circle the fish reserves are now in large enough amounts to actually give them a full meal within the rationing every time they eat so i just hope that i can keep this going without having to add a million more groups i will have to add the groups incrementally no matter what i do and unfortunately there will be a natural stop when i have reached eight groups of each type because that is the most groups you can make of each type in the game in this development at this point 
the groups that will hinder me to have a huge population is definitely the hunters, the fishermen and the gathering groups. The wood choppers and the crafters, they don't need eight groups. All the others, they will. Placing down pits as well is a good idea, so I've done that. And uh, now we're just waiting for summer in hopes that we get plenty plant produce. We really, really need a good boost now. I have three groups of fishermen and I'm probably going to uh, max out the hunters very soon as well. Not all places are suitable for survival and uh, this seems to be one of them. So I will see how long I can cling on before it gets too bad and then I just have to up and leave again. There is no way I can stay like this and the food is so little that people are constantly starving. It's not good. All my kids are going to be sick. All my kids are likely going to die. I have to do something. And I'm going to start replacing down a few more fireplaces. Everything I can do to ease the unrest, I will do. Oh, I need benches. I need to sit down and rest. This is such hard work. It's actually really hard work. You guys should try it. You should try it sometime and then come back to me and tell me how you felt it was. It's not easy, is it? It's not something you can just leave a running and then go down and make a sandwich in the kitchen, come back and everything will be fine. No, half your try will be bleeding dead. Seriously, this is hard work. So we need benches to sit on and relax. I mean that. <laughs> Right, there is quite a bit of meat coming in at the moment because I increased my hunters. So um, I'm going to make a few more dryers for this. And uh, now almost summer, almost summer, that means we will have added food types, which is awesome. I'm just so looking forward to it. And I'm sure my entire tribe is looking forward to it as well. <laughs> Okay, so my people seem to be really content at the moment and that is because it is always food that is alpha and omega. So if you manage to keep their bellies full all the time, they will accept a lot of the other things that you will do, such as lacking proper housing. Of course, those with negative grades and high will are more likely to leave though, but the others will accept it because they are not starving. As long as people are not hungry after just having a meal, they will be okay with the majority of what you perhaps are lacking, such as proper housing. The problem comes when all these issues are accumulating, like if you start with lack of proper housing, that is plus 25 on rest, and then you go on with that people are constantly going around a little bit hungry, then you add another 15 on rest, and then you're suddenly up in 40, and then they will start to threaten to leave. And already at 50, people can leave, especially those that have a very high will. They just don't take it, they will leave. But you can get away with having some poor housing if you just keep people's uh, belly full. Migrating once or twice per year with such a huge tribe, it is fairly utopian to think that there will be no problems and no challenges and certainly very odd that anyone should uh, be in the belief that nobody will complain and nobody will leave because that's not how it works. It doesn't work like that in real life today either and, and there was certainly some form of protest back in those days as well. We certainly know this because there were conflicts, weren't there? They don't start out of nothing. There is a reason behind it. There's uh, opposing opinions. Need for food. Better conditions. It's basically fighting for survival. So yeah, I definitely think that we are doing quite all right at the moment. We are in summer though, so there should really be more plant food than I can see at the moment. Um, there's not a lot coming in at all. I wonder if we should plan on a autumn migration, perhaps. Hmm. Or at least I won't wait until basically all the food is gone, because that is going to be a catastrophe. Why are you unhappy? Let's have a look. You are famished. Hmm. You have been going for quite a while without uh, food that you actually did need. You do have okay traits. So you have gone for at least three days for that proper food, meaning you have the terminal starvation bowl, which is not good. This means I will have to make sure that there is enough food for her I with immediate effect. Otherwise, I am going to lose her and she's a young girl and I don't want to lose her. So crossing fingers that she will be the first one to the food in the morning. 
when you are famished, uh, depending on the grade of how long you've been famished, uh, you will take several days to to get on top again, and you will be sick from this. Um, unfortunately, as players, we cannot do anything but to make sure there is enough food to go around. But somehow she has managed to always be lost to the food and always just get the smaller amounts, which in the end made her sick. But I wish there was some kind of system, a backup system that we had, that when we missed someone and not getting enough food and they were more and more getting sick, I wish there was a system where we could just press a button where they where they would go eat, like we could press a button that said, go eat right now, have so and so many portions, eat so and so often for so and so many days. Um, that would be excellent because we will make mistakes all the time. I know it's so much to keep an eye on. So I have made a big mistake. I thought that food was okay for everyone and then poof I see her unhappy face and she is actually dying. I am going to lose her because I cannot for my bare life make sure that she gets first to the food or not last to the food again. I do wonder though how she managed to always be last to the food and that she's the only one with this terminal. Oh my goodness here she goes. Yeah I just lost her. I knew that would happen. So now I need to be extra vigilant to pay attention. To me this is quite a mystery because there are many others that should be on terminal starvation above her. So this actually means that she has consistently been lost to the food, meaning she has only gotten scraps compared to the others. There is no other explanation to me that makes sense. I will however look into this at a later point and see if I can find anything that needs to be tweaked. I think I will also want to suggest to the devs that we get a system where the player can take control over people that are famished and going into terminal starvation, like getting a button that says go eat and then this person that is struggling with famine will go eat whatever is there when we click this button. Because um, I don't like not being in control over everything that is going on in the game. Granted, yes, it is in development. Granted, yes, still a lot more to come. But I find this uh, annoying and I don't like it the slightest. You don't lose a 24-year-old when there is food and she's the only one with terminal starvation. Not likely. Okay, so I just noticed that we have tons of rawhide and uh, very little leather. So I created a bunch of tanners. That should sort it and then we can build even more pelt huts. There's going to be a complete city of pelt huts only in the end. Well, whatever it takes, we will do it. Guess what I forgot? Yep, I forgot to add the clams to the gatherer's task. I can't believe I am by the coast. We have been here for, for two seasons and I forgot the flipping clams. I mean, come on, there is just so much to keep an eye on that something is bound to be forgotten. Maybe I should do this live so people can just type me, Lily, Lily, your clams, Lily, your clams. <laughs> it would be awesome. But the good thing about this is that now that we haven't touched them since we came, we will have a feast of seafood. whoop de doo let's go. <laughs> Oh dear, okay, let's get down some luxury huts as well. Let's build a reed hut. People are going to be super happy about that, that's for sure. So we now actually have 24 huts. This means the eradication of unrest due to lack of housing is almost complete. I can't believe we've managed to do this in just a few seasons. This is really good. Oh, this is going to startle me every time I see it now, the notification of people have died. But this time it's death due to natural causes, old age, and they probably died with a full belly. <laughs> so we are steady but surely getting in the plant foods and also the seafood. You can see there are clams and this will help greatly in trying to build the resources of both meat and also fish. Um, so th this means there is more option of of what to eat however it is far too little to sustain the tribe so before any kind of famine sets in for anyone else we are actually going to migrate we're going to migrate before any unrest sets in i think this is the best way to do it because we have been here for two seasons and there is uh, no way that we will survive 
the winter here. I could of course risk it and hope that the autumn will bring lots of food but uh, I can't risk it. I do not want more starvation deaths. I will rather have people leaving due to lack of housing than to me not managing to feed them all. So I will be extremely vigilant and migrate as soon as I see the food is diminishing, especially if winter is approaching. Okay then, let's, uh, let's go back to the uh, Forked River and uh, crossing fingers that the seed is really good. You know, we could be lucky this time. We could have a good seed and perhaps even manage a full year. Uh, when we go there now, there should be replenishment. There should be a completely new and random seed. And we are still in summer, so there should be a really... You're leaving us while we're traveling. You're not even waiting. What the heck? Some of these people, seriously. Okay, so if we are lucky, we will get a good seed and can manage a full year. And I hope to whatever is holy in ancient cities that I for once will get a good seed. Just for once, come on. Okay, so looking around, it is the same old place that I remember with the wonky river that I am so fond of. Uh, I'm going to look around and see if the, I can see any hazelnut trees and, and how many rosehip bushes there are, etc, etc. But uh, I will also place my people to do work immediately because we have no time to waste. We only have one more season before winter is upon us and we do need food and we do need sleeping places. I'm not going to waste too much time finding a very pretty place to chalk down the camp. We just have to do it as close as where we landed. Otherwise, people would keep going back and forth and back and forth for days to bring the goods that we brought with us to the new storage areas. And uh, let's not do that. Just, just be super efficient. Survival with food above anything else. So here goes. Okay, so five places going down. I'm going to make like eight of them at least. And let people slowly but surely build it up at the same time as they are gathering food. I want to see if I can get away with not having a complete maxed out uh, amount of hunters because there should be so much uh, plant food here that we shouldn't really need the large amount of uh, protein at the moment. Remove one of my fishing groups. Let's just get down some dryers as well to quickly dry it so we can have it for winter just make sure we have enough of them so I'm just going to chuck down quite a few here yeah that should do it for now and that's what we had time for this time around uh, I will continue to go through the years and get more and more people and try to survive the harshest of conditions in ancient cities in a few days time uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, doing this challenge with me and I do hope you will continue to follow me on this challenge until I actually have to stop due to reasons that is out of my control. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Till then, take care.